Good afternoon, radio friends. We are singing for our opening number, The Solid Rock, and are dedicating it to Mrs. Glenn Tubbs of Sandusky and to Mr. and Mrs. William Parker of Lapeer. Dedicated to Mrs. Gardner Stone, Mrs. Mary Briggs and Violet, the Mapes family of Lapeer in honor of Mrs. Mapes' birthday, and to Wellington Dennis of Attica. <laughs> Thank you. 
quartet is singing, He's Everything to Me, dedicated to Mrs. Anna Albrand, Mr. and Mrs. Cecil Walker of Carroll, and to Mr. and Mrs. John Phelps of Mayville. beginning with the 19th verse. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, 
nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the falls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Heavenly Father, we're grateful to Thee for Thy watch-keeping care over us these past months. We're thankful, Lord, for Thy beautiful day that Thou hast given to us. Surely goodness and mercy has been wonderful to us. And the Lord, Thou has more than been what we have needed. Thou has given us more than what we have asked for. And help us that we may be closer to Thee, that we may be more like Thee day by day. No, Lord, as this broadcast is going out this afternoon, touch hearts, help someone, Lord, that they may just feel thy nearness and thy grace abounding in their hearts. Help them, Lord, to be encouraged to, be, to draw a little bit closer to thee and be a little bit more like thee day by day. Lord, thou hast promised in thy word as it's been read that all things would be given to those that walk close to thee, and Lord, according to their need. And help us, Lord, that we may just walk close by thy side and follow thee day by day, that thy will may be done in our lives and our hearts. Help us, Lord, as we continue to sing and we continue to play and that this broadcast goes on, that each one of us may feel the nearness of thee. And as the message is being given, Lord, speak to some heart that they may be not only drawn closer to thee, but their lives may be changed and their heart may be reconciled unto thee. For Jesus' sake, amen. This is radio station WMPC at Lapeer, Michigan. A duet, I Know Who Holds Tomorrow, by Leland and Phyllis. This was requested by Mrs. Robert Phelps for her grandparents, Mr. and Mrs. William Dean of Vassar, and also dedicated to Mrs. Leland York and girls who couldn't be with us. I don't know about tomorrow I just live from day to day I don't buy sunshine for the skies may turn to gray I don't worry or the future for I know what Jesus said and today I'll walk beside him for he knows what is ahead many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand but I know tomorrow and I know who holds my hand every step is getting brighter as the golden stairs I climb Every burden's getting lighter, every 
every cloud is silver lined Where the sun is always shining There no tear will dim the eye At the ending of the rainbow Where the mountains touch the sky Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand But I know it's tomorrow And I know I don't know about tomorrow It may bring me poverty But the one who feeds the sparrow Is the one who stands by me And the path that be my portion May be through the flame or flood for his presence goes before me, and I'm covered with his blood. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know tomorrow, and I know. Our next song is Dwelling in Beulah Land, dedicated to Mr. and Mrs. David Harp of Mayville for their 60th wedding anniversary, and to Mr. and Mrs. Max Hunter of Kingston. <coughs> Oh, yes, I'm feasting on the meadow. 
I is on the sparrow. It's our next number, and Shirley's singing the solo part. And we're dedicating it to Mr. and Mrs. Ray Smith, Mr. and Mrs. Clarence Roth, Mr. and Mrs. Lloyd Webster and family of Mayville, and to Mrs. M. S. Welch of Metamora, and also to Reverend Richmond. should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely? I long for heaven and home. When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. And I know 
we will have a reading, the gospel according to you. There's a sweet old story translated for man, but writ in the long, long ago. The Gospel according to Mark, Luke, and John, of Christ and his mission below. You are writing a Gospel, a chapter each day, by deeds that you do, by words that you say. Men read what you write, whether faithless or true. Say, what is the gospel according to you? Tis a wonderful story, that gospel of love, as it shines in the Christ life divine, and oh, that its truth might be told again in the story of your life and mine. Unselfishness mirrors in every scene, love blossoms on every sod, and back from its vision the heart comes to tell the wonderful goodness of God. You are writing each day a letter to man. Take care that the writing is true. Tis the only gospel some men will read, that gospel according to you. Phyllis is singing, Can the World See Jesus in You? Dedicated to Mrs. Edith Phibbs of Oxford, Mrs. Roy McConnell of Yale, and to Mr. and Mrs. James Pettit of North Branch. Priscilla and Catherine, Seek Ye First the Kingdom, dedicated to Mrs. Edith Ruby of Flint and to Mrs. Wellington Dennis, who I forgot to mention when we sang for her husband. Oh, 
Good afternoon, radio friends. <clears throat> Our text this afternoon is found in Matthew, the 6th chapter, in the 33rd verse. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. These words of Jesus, spoken in the Sermon on the Mount, should interest every one of us, for it includes us all. The text is one of the greatest rules of success, but sad to say, many are seeking all these earthly things instead of the kingdom of God. There are three things to be considered today. What is the kingdom? How do we get it? And what are the results? 
The first question, what is the kingdom of God and his righteousness? It is not an earthly kingdom, but a spiritual, set up in the hearts of individuals. The kingdom is within you. In Romans 14, 17, we read, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, one answer which he gave was, Man cannot live by bread alone, showing us that our soul cannot be fed on bodily comforts. If we were not eternal beings to live on beyond this life, we should all say, Let us eat, drink, and be merry, and be no better than the beast of the field. The first name quality or qualification is righteousness. This comes from God, and we must have it before we realize the peace and joy already mentioned. Some people declare themselves self-righteous, good enough of themselves without God's help or righteousness. Of these the Lord said, their righteousness was as filthy rags. How many people would like to be at peace with God and their fellow men and could be in a short time if only they would acknowledge their condition and need by humbling themselves before God. Friend, can you lay your head upon your pillow at night and feel at peace with God and man? It is a wonderful experience, knowing if Christ should come before morning, all is well. The third ingredient is joy. <clears throat> the poet sings, O oh, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. And we read, The joy of the Lord is our strength. Repeatedly we are told to rejoice. The second question to be answered is, How do we get into this kingdom? Jesus said to Nicodemus in John 3, 5, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is flesh is flesh, and that which is spirit is spirit. Ye must be born again. This experience comes by seeking. Seek ye first. Make it the business of our lives. We shall never drift into heaven by accident. We're told to seek him with all our heart, and we shall find him and to seek him as for silver. This is clearly demonstrated about us how people toil early and late for the silver or gold of this world which soon will perish or vanish away. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. It is a gift, but we must accept it by preparing our hearts for his coming through repentance. The promise of Christ was, And all these things shall be added unto you. Many of us have realized the beauty of the lily, how God has clothed them and provides for the sparrow of the field, which is of little earthly value. Surely he will care for us. A widow who was left without any means of livelihood for herself and her family prayed thus to God, Lord, I'll do the work if you will do the worrying. If only many more could learn this lesson instead of both working and worrying. There are many instances in God's word of his tender care. We recall the account of Elijah fed by the ravens, the children of Israel in the wilderness being fed by manna and quail, and their clothes did not wear out for forty years. There was the widow who was about to lose her sons and was told to borrow vessels or kittles from her neighbors to hold the great supply of oil so her debt could be paid. We urge you, friend, if you have never found the riches of this kingdom, seek him first. Do it today. 
Now goodbye until next time and God bless you. The quartet is singing I've Anchored in Jesus, dedicated to Mr. and Mrs. Harmon Owen for their wedding anniversary, to Mrs. Cora Bates, Cora Yor, to Mrs. Stella McGraw, and Ben Tyson, all of Mayville, and to Mr. and Mrs. Ernest Bodway of Pontiac. by the Mayville Free Methodist Church has reached you from the Gospel Radio Station WMPC at Lapeer, Michigan. It's now our privilege to bring to you the regular broadcast by a group of workers from Flint under the direction of Mr. Max Hogel. We are sure that they will be very happy to take time to call in appreciation of their program today.